Hello Pisces, welcome to Lotus Heart Tarot. I'm so happy to have you here. I hope y'all can hear me all right. My cord broke on my microphone this morning and I wasn't able to find a replacement. So we are going micless and I will try to remember to talk at my high volume, um, but um, hopefully it should be okay. I used to record like this and didn't really have too many complaints. I know that um, some people, sometimes, every once in a while, can't hear. There's not anything I can do about it, and I'm so sorry. <sighs> I like to begin my readings by thanking those of you who regularly watch my channel, who like, share, subscribe, comment, all the ways that you support my channel. I am so, so, so grateful to each and every one of you. Some of you have really been ride or dies. You've been with me from the very, very, very beginning. And I thank you so much. Um, to those of you who are new here, I hope you become a ride or die. I hope that you find a really welcome spot here. Um, and just remember guys that these messages are general and so take what resonates and leave the rest. Don't try to make anything fit. For Pisces, please spirit, for Pisces, what do you have for my Pisces? What does Pisces need to know? Oh yes, Pisces, I swear, here you guys go. Man, with the books again. <laughs> um, do you guys got something new? Like, and this, I, I honestly feel like this is just a brand new cycle. This is like major, major. I, I really have been feeling this in your energy for some time now coming and I feel like it's here or upon you. Um, you know, we're all on different timelines. This isn't a one size fits all world that we live in. And, um, you know, so things open up and happen at different times. And just because what we may be talking about in this reading isn't happening right now in your life, you can use this reading to manifest, but you can also know that it is possible that, um, you know, things are aligning for this to be a reality. You know, it just hasn't happened yet. Sometimes it can take up to eight months, you know, for a tarot card reading to come true. So just keep that in mind. Don't get frustrated, you know, stay positive, hold the faith. If, if, you're, if you're feeling like you're in a rough spot instead of a, a really nice, good spot, um, I feel like it's coming. <sighs> All that being said, <laughs> you have judgment and birth. And what beautiful energies to have together. Um, this judgment card says soul searching will bring inner peace to so many areas of your life. And birth says universal energy brings you opportunity and possibility. You know, this is stay grounded and centered. You've come a long way and you're rising up out of an old cycle and into a new one. That old cycle has done you well, even if it was a cycle where there was a lot of suffering or a lot of heavy or low vibrational challenging energies. Um, it has done you well. It has prepared you for this. That's what judgment is telling you. And birth is telling you you're ready and it's all happening. It's all coming together. And, um, you know, open up to receive these beautiful opportunities and possibilities that are coming your way. Don't forget where you came from. We don't need to hold on to the burdens of the past or the old stories or the old narrative that we tell ourselves about the past, we can let that go. It's not doing us any good. Um, and it's just added weight and drag. It's, it's, it's not going to help us where we're going, but the lessons learned and, you know, the new energy that we've integrated into ourselves and into our being, the new wisdom, the new discernment, all of those things will serve you well in this new chapter. I just keep getting like, you're ready. You're ready. You're ready. You're ready. All right, so let's see for what, please, Spirit, for what is Pisces ready? What can you tell me? You guys have been getting this energy of freedom a lot lately. Um... You know, for me, freedom and love go hand in hand. For me, love is the shelter for our freest self. Um, when we are loved right, 
you know, and I, I hesitate to use the word right, although it is the right word. <laughs> My goodness, it has so many meanings. Um, but when we are loved right, by the right person in the right way, you know, we are completely free because we know that that person is okay. And man, when I say this, oh, I am trusting you guys, but they're going to love us no matter what. That's what unconditionality brings to the, to the equation. The thing is we have to be awakened. We have to be the pillar of consciousness. We have to not take advantage of it just as we have attempted to love other people unconditionally and they have trespassed on that love, that offering. They have taken more than we wanted to give. They have not appreciated it. They have, you know, all, all of the things, all of the things. And I feel like that's a cycle that we are leaving. And maybe it is that we had that experience so that when we were presented with this unconditional love, we knew how to treat it. We knew how to honor it. We knew how to respect it. We may have thought we knew before, but, but maybe, maybe it took that lesson. Maybe it took that experience for us to fully appreciate and understand it. Unconditional love is, I, I mean, it, it honestly brings tears to my eyes just to even try to describe it. Um, personally, um, this is, I, I actually have this on my wall in my living room. Um, and for me, this is the ultimate expression of what love, unconditional love is. It's 1 Corinthians 4. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. And then love never fails. And When you find yourself in a situation where it is safe for you to love like that because you are being loved like that, that's what I mean by being loved right, you have the ultimate freedom. And it is, it is a huge like gift. It is a huge honor. It is a huge kind of responsibility, right? Because my gosh, you know, you don't want to transgress against that. And I just don't know how to find the words to say what I'm trying to say, but I hope that I have said enough, you know, um, about like what the vibe is that I'm getting from this energy. But this, this may, this, what you have been through may be about to make sense. You know how when you go through something and it's like, why do I have to go through this? Why do I have to experience this kind of suffering? Like, I'm just out here trying to love somebody right. Like, why am I getting these crappy people that are taking advantage of me or that are, you know, gaslighting me or that are, you know, wearing me out, using me up, like whatever it is, right? Like, why aren't I getting what, what I'm trying to give? And it feels as though there is this energy of looking back where it all makes sense. Looking back like hand in hand, you know, this sounds so cheesy, but like on the porch swing with the lemonade, watching the grandkids play in the front yard going, well, it all makes sense now because this moment was made possible by all of that. Um, and a lot of times in life, like we are egoic as humans, like the ego is part of the human condition. And a lot of times we think, oh yeah, well, I'm doing it right. Or I'm, this is what I'm offering, or this is who I am. This is what I'm about. Like da, 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 da. And 
we get so entrenched in our belief that we already know what we're doing or that we are already like masters of something. Um, and through yoga, God bless yoga, but through yoga, I have really learned that like, we don't ever really master anything. The key is in life is to just figure out how to not let other things master us to re remain our own master and to be always open to learning, always open to no expectations, uh, you know, with ourself, with life, with anything and no attachments. And to me, like there is a sweet spot there. And I always have to remind myself of that. And I always have to bring myself back to that. And I thank yoga because that's what yoga does for me every day. Um, but there is sometimes the want and the desire to have something is so strong it does become our master and sometimes it doesn't let us see an opportunity or the truth or i don't really know how to say this but it's all about to make sense, Pisces. You have awakening and you have freedom. Oh, wow. Oh my God. When the cards just go hand in hand with what you're saying, Oh my God, this is beautiful. This is so beautiful. Pisces. God, I am so happy for you guys. Energy does not lie. It just, it, energy does not lie. Energy is a truth teller. It can only tell the truth. It cannot tell a lie. How we want to interpret it can be a lie, but energy itself does not lie and I can feel your energy and it gives me the butterflies in my stomach. It does. I'm just going to tell you. So if you're not there yet, keep plugging away, stay optimistic, hold your vision, keep going. Um, you have denial and you have lessons. When we, for so many reasons in life, we deny, right? And they're usually tied to the human experience of having an ego, um, where it's like our pride won't let us acknowledge certain things, um, opportunities <laughs> for growth, um, mostly. And, um, and we learn a lot of lessons around this. The harder we try to fight for this energy or this idea that I am right, or I already know, the more life is going to put lessons there for you the more life is going to school you. That's just the way that it works. That's how life keeps us in line, you know? And so sometimes we get in a path of denial of, you know, maybe we'll say, okay, yeah, well, I've healed my wounds, right? And, and you know, I'm, I'm not broken anymore or something. Like, I'm just pulling an example out of the freaking air. But, and, and then we are going to meet that thing that can trigger us because we have not healed <laughs> over and over and over again to show us how we are still reactionary how we are still able to be triggered and it is it is not mean it is not life hoping that we suffer it is life teaching us it is life showing us the way to where we can go towards the light and towards truth to actually have what we want. It isn't a cruel twist of fate. It isn't that we're being overlooked. It isn't that we are unloved or unlovable. It is life, in fact, loving you. And when we finally say, okay, you know what? I don't want this to be the way things are anymore. And I'm willing to do what I need to do to change that, To to experience something different, then, then everything changes. Then we begin to see, we begin to see the wounding. It, it, it comes, like, I, I'm telling you, I've been on a path of healing for years. I've also been on a path of denial for years. 
I, I understand this complexity and this duality, right? Um, and, and sometimes we're taking small steps and sometimes they're at the same time. We are denying and learning at the same time. You know, sometimes we can't even open ourselves up to the entirety of a thing. We're just tackling a little piece and then we tackle another little piece and another little piece. It's kind of the Knight of Pentacles energy, right? Where it's like, okay, I got to take a step in the right direction and every step is a meaningful step. I may not be taking a giant leap or, or racing to the finish line like the Knight of Swords, but like every step I take is meaningful and is difficult and is a challenge and is teaching me something in and of itself. Um, and it feels like you were on that kind of path, Pisces, for a while, and you're rising up out of it into this gorgeous, gorgeous energy of fertility and birth and rebirth and abundance. Um, you know, there is on the bottom of the deck an energy of hesitation, which I don't know if this is you or your person or both. Um, a lot of times, like I can definitely feel that you have a soulmate coming in for sure, for sure. Um, and so a lot of times, you know, it, they, you will have been on separate paths, but learning very similar things that has prepared you or it doesn't even have to be learning similar things. It can be like learning whatever it is that you need to learn to be ready for your soulmate, you know, and whatever they need to learn. And um, I think I touched on this in yesterday's reading, how like the greatest work we do in a relationship is not the work we do with each other, it's the work we do on ourselves. And that's the best thing we can do. You can't fix anybody else and they can't fix you. you that's why you gotta keep your eyes on your own yoga mat, you know? You can't compare yourself to other people and you can't go, well, I'm better than them because I don't do that. Or I'm better than them because I can actually hold this pose or I can actually get lower or I can actually, I'm more flexible or I balance better or whatever the hell. It doesn't matter. It's who are you today compared to who were you yesterday? That's what you're trying to, that's what you're trying to compete with, you know, really. Um, in Pisces, it looks like you've grown leaps and bounds and it looks like your outside world is about to start reflecting it. And you may have these moments where you almost like can't believe it. That's what I'm getting from this. See how her eyes, she has those hands over her eyes. It's kind of like, I'm afraid to look. Um, wow. Underneath the hesitation is ascend, um, which feels like a really powerful thing. You also have this awakening energy and this judgment energy. There is a spiritual aspect to this entire time in your life. And, you know, this may be where you're really tapping into that high priestess and really, really understanding the messages of your intuition on a deeper level than you ever have before. Um, it may even be that you really worked on that. You know, when you are trying to, you know, move through difficulty and you have acknowledge that like, okay, I do not want to repeat this cycle. Okay. I don't want to have this experience again. I am open and willing, like, please help guide me. Please help show me what do I need to know? What do I need to learn? How do I, how do I make a different choice to end the cycle and to move into the cycle of my dreams? How do I do that? You know, and little by little, you know, like for me, I will do yoga and I'll meditate and then I'll go and I'll make a cup of tea. And then sometimes I'm making a cup of tea and some memory from my past will climb into my mind from God knows where, for God knows what reason. But I think this is part of the whole denial and lessons energy. A lot of times it is a moment that I'm remembering where I did deny something or where I wasn't as advanced or as open to learning as I am now. And I'll see it, you know, and I'll be like, oh man, oh, that's a regretful moment, you know, but I don't now because I am, I have gone such a long way on my healing path. I will say to myself, wow, look how far you've come versus like beating myself up and going into like a three day spiral of shame and regret and guilt and whatever, you know, I say to myself, you know what, that was the best you could do at that time. That's really where you were at. And look at where you are now. Look at how you took that as the opportunity it was to change your life, you know, and that, that builds on itself over and over again. Right. But 
it's part of the healing process because those memories come up for us to release it, for us to come to a place of peace and say, that's not who I am now. I would not make that choice now. And to be able to let that go. And if we're not there yet, then we still have the opportunity to kind of look at it and kind of say, what could I have done differently? What, what lesson have I learned now? Or what, wh where's the opportunity in it? Um, Pisces, I feel like there are, it says your love is blooming. Your answers arrive in spring. So for some of you, there is someone new coming in in spring, wherever that is, whatever time frame that is for you, wherever you are in the world. Um, being Pisceans here in my hemisphere, in my little part of the world, spring coincides very nicely with your birthday. With your season, Pisces. My God. Oh. Pisces. You have the Oracle of Wands, which is the Queen of Wands, and you have the Ace of Swords, which is clarity, which is success, which is victory. And again, I feel like I'm saying this every day now, and you also have the Eight of Pentacles on the bottom of the deck, which is mastery of self, right? I feel like I'm saying this to you over and over and over and over again. But Pisces, it is so attractive when someone knows who they are, when they're living in alignment with their truth, when they allow the truth to transform them, you know, when they are shining bright, when they are they are who they are and they're living in their on a, uh, their authenticity unapologetically this is a very 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 attractive quality right and with the queen of wands that's what we're talking about we're talking about someone who is very 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 attractive you also have the black cat here in the foreground which is you know a symbolic of psychicness and you know, I'm definitely also getting that energy of like, you may be building a really strong connection with your intuition. The more you are in alignment and your alignment is your pillar of consciousness, the more your intuition is just going to be speaking to you. And, and even in a way in which you can, you can ask your intuition a question and then be quiet and listen for its answer, like with intention, like connect to it and tap into it if you're not doing that already but with the eight of pentacles here this is like i've been really working on myself i've been really putting one foot in front of the other it's like that knight of pentacles energy that i was talking about it's just that it, it's like i have done the thing i have been doing the work and now it, it feels like this ace of swords is almost like the starting line of this next chapter this next cycle that you're entering into here let me um clarify these wow you're, you are freeing yourself from past burdens. Um, and you do, yeah, wow, you have the five of wands on the bottom of the deck. The five of wands can be, for me, it is oftentimes symbolic of a heart chakra blockage. Um, but it can also be where the outside world, you were taking on energy from the outside world. Like when you're looking for external validation, that everything is okay or that you're on the right track um and you're not really getting it you know or you're it's like you're getting delay blockage you know you're you're getting like something that may feel quote unquote negative or challenging or difficult or even lower vibrational or um in opposition to where you're trying to go even um there's this energy of, of going, okay, let me bring it in. Let me call it home. Let me address these issues. And so you have the hermit and the 10 of wands where it's like a conscious decision to close out a burdensome cycle, to release the things that are holding you back from your dreams, from your wish fulfillment, which is the star in the hermit's lantern, right? So you have 
the Hermit and the Ten of Wands. So this is your choice of how I'm going to handle this. I'm Maybe I'm going to pull back. Maybe I'm not going to date for a while. Maybe I'm not going to you know, put myself out there for a while, or maybe I'm going to like intentionally spend time journaling, or maybe I'm going to intentionally spend time, I don't know, learning yoga or meditation or whatever. Um, I'm, I, I'm going to, this is that moment where you say to the universe, like, Hey, I don't want to repeat this cycle. I want to close the cycle out. I, I want something different here. How do I do that? And with the magician, this is where you're stepping into your power and you're realizing how many tools you actually have at your disposal and you're alchemizing this messy, burdensome, difficult, blocked up period of time into something different. And you know what, how you're alchemizing it? I can even tell you how you're alchemizing it. You're going within. You're not looking outside anymore for the validation. You're not trying to get the world to tell you what you want it to tell you. You're going inside and you're validating yourself. Page of Swords, Four of Wands with the freaking Nine of Cups on the bottom of the deck. Wow, wow, and wow. <laughs> Here is the starting line. Um, and it feels like someone is holding the sword for you, Pisces. How nice. And this is someone I feel with very serious intentions. I feel this is someone who can see a very long-term future with you. I feel like this is someone who wants to build something with you on a very firm foundation. With the page, this can be someone where there's like a lot of communication, where you're talking a lot. Things may even move slowly. Um, but it's like this person, you see how the road goes out in front of them. You see how this is like a starting line? Um, and that's what I got from this card. It, you know, somebody wants to start something with you. You know, again, you have that birth card where I do feel like there are many opportunities. I'm sorry if this drives you guys crazy that my ring finger is a different color of nail polish than my other fingers. I miss my daughter. We used to paint our nails like this, but we would be opposite each other <laughs> when I would go out of town to travel for work. And I missed her, and so I painted my nails like this, and then I just realized that might be super annoying to watch. Anyway, sorry, that's what it's there for. But there's someone here, like there are opportunities that are coming because they're in alignment with your energy. These may be opportunities at work or at the world in, in large. So for some of you, they may have to do something with the internet or something online. Um but it doesn't have to be, right? It can also be educationally, it can also be informationally, it can it can be intellectually, it can be something with the law, it could be a lot of different things, right? Um, but anyway, you have someone here who, they may be relatively new to your life, they, you know, like, oh, I don't wanna put too many qualifiers on this because this is a general reading, but there's someone in your life who I feel like there's either new communication happening with them or they're kind of new to your life and communication kind of seems easy or um, yeah, like there's common ground here. Um, they see things, their, their alignment is similar to your alignment um, or like what they care about or what their core belief is and they may also be someone who's starting out really trying to use their alignment as their pillar of consciousness um like to be so aligned and to have that be their pillar of consciousness but this person is seeing you as an equal opposite you know with the four of wands here there's this energy of like wow you know you could hold up your side of this thing as equally as i can hold up this side of things the Four of Wands is also where our manifestations come into reality. And it's also this point where I feel like you're like, oh, this is why this didn't happen before now. This is why that couldn't have happened before now. Um, but I feel like this person makes you very happy. You've got these two lovebirds, right, in the middle of your card with these nine cups around it. And look at that, the Four of Pentacles, the Four of Wands. This is somebody who really wants to make sure that the foundation, you also had two fours here. The birth card was a four and the judgment is 14. 
Um, this is someone who wants to make sure the foundation is in place for a very long journey. Um, that's how I see it. I also feel like this person sees you somewhat angelically. There's these wings here and this, this raven is looking in this direction. And there's something here where it's like, it, it's almost as if they feel they have um, discovered a an angel. It's interesting. Um, you have the Elder of Pentacles, which is the King of Pentacles. And um, I don't know if I am just now like noticing this in all my decks of cards or what, but in so many of my decks of cards, there some certain cards have the pentacle over the crown chakra. You see that? Or the third eye chakra. I'm seeing the cow, that cow um, card from a few days ago. From the Guardians of the Night deck. And now I'm seeing this frog with this pentacle over the crown chakra. This person, I feel like they kind of knew when they met you or when they saw you or when there's something here where there's a spiritual tie or there is, it's like, I feel as though, um, I don't feel like the crown chakra is blocked by the pentacle at all. Sometimes, you know, like we feel that with the four of pentacles or whatever. No, I feel it's like, this person has, they may really, really, really trust their instincts or their intuition, or they may be really super guided, um, like by spirit guides, or, you know, they may even be like a little bit psychic or whatever. Um, I, you know, there's somebody that go, that trusts that spiritual sense. It's even a 77 card, which is, you know, sevens are spiritual for sure. And this is just giving me like, I don't know, somebody who just knows they have a deep inner knowing and they know what they know, you know, and I feel like they're, they are wanting to start something with you, but I feel with that page of swords up there, I feel like it's like, they don't want to come on too strong, too fast or something like this. The swords are such a fast moving energy. And I feel it's like maybe this person feels like you're still kind of emerging from this judgment energy, or maybe they feel that you're not quite as sure about them or this hang one here. One one person wasn't quite as ready as the other one. I, and I and I feel like the other one is just waiting for the other one to have the perspective change or to like see the thing or to have the same enlightenment. And and there is a level of stability and trust that it will happen. Like there is a level of I'm going to be consistent. I'm going to, you know, show up. I'm going to offer what I have to offer. And I'm going to trust that in the end, it will be seen. The enlightenment will happen. The perspective will shift. You know what I mean? Like maybe it's somebody who feels like they're not quite ready to be in a relationship. Or maybe it's somebody who's still like kind of finishing up a healing cycle or, you know, but there is a connection happening between these two people and there is a level of patience or sacrifice that one person is willing to make so that the other person is as ready as they are. That's what I'm getting. So take it as it resonates, but you have the chariot and the temperance here. And th this is like definitely an energy of coming together. Um, this is definitely an energy of like, we're coming together for the long haul here for success, for victory, to share a vision, to make it happen. I, I am here for the journey. I'm here for the duration. I'm here for the ride. 
you have the Oracle of Swords on the bottom of the deck. So one person is offering a lot of consistency. The other person, it's, you know, they've been through a lot. They've been through a difficult sword cycle. They, um, they may also be like very intellectual or like a real thinker type person. Like they may have a very prolific inner thinking world. <laughs> Wow, that's truly how that's coming across to me. I don't know. Um, uh, but anyway, uh, okay. Um, and so it's like, it's like someone is just patiently waiting for them to, for, to not be able to find any other answer but them, but this, but this journey, but this ride. And it's like, I feel like they're trying to come across as like cool, maybe a little like not not so super invested like the king of pentacles is like ready for commitment it's like with that page of swords it's like hey you know i'll let you get to know me i'll let you see that i'm trustworthy i'll let you see you know i'll i'll answer all your questions i'll you know what i mean i'll consistently communicate with you um i'll you know what i mean i don't know i'll show you that i'm interested all of the time like but i i I'm not gonna freak you out by being like, I think we're gonna get married. You know what I mean? Um, okay. Oh my God, but while this person is waiting, as they're allowing your desire to grow, their desire is growing. Holy macaroni. You have the seven of pentacles with the devil. And this person is trying to be as freaking patient as they can be, but holy mackerel, they are wanting it. Um, they, they're, oh my goodness, this energy. <laughs> Pisces. Um, oh my God. I don't even know what to clarify this with. Um, the devil for Pisces. It is at a sacrifice to this person. See, one person has clarity and the other person is slightly withdrawn and has cloudy judgment. On the bottom of the deck, there is intimacy, bonding, sensual. This is what I'm picking up on with the devil, if you know what I mean. Um, and this person cannot get free from this deep inner knowing, this clarity that they have, the truth that they have, their intentions that they have. And it's like, I feel that this person, you know, I, I, I feel like they are really holding back with saying what they really want or how they really feel here. Or this can be you as well, like put it where it fits, right? But it, it, it's an energy of like, my intention is to marry you with the King of Pentacles. Like my intention is to spend the rest of my life with you. But like, I know that if I said that to you, it would freak you out or it would, it, it would be counterproductive to what I'm trying to do. So what I'm trying to do is just to be patient, to be steady, to be stable, to be solid, to show up when I'm called to show up kind of energy and to give you the space and the connection that you need to clear this up and to show up with a fire burning as bright as me in this but i also am sitting here in repeat cycle with the eight of swords thinking this over and over again and so what is happening to me is that i am also just wanting this more and more intensely this is something holy macaroni this is hot 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 energy and it's building to a place where this person is not going to be able to contain it. I'm just saying. And I, I think it's building on both sides. Because um, you have intimacy on the bottom of the deck. Okay. Now that we got that straight, we have the Hierophant and Death. And this is clarifying this energy of the Hanged One, the Chariot, and the Temperance. And it's like, we cannot stay in the Hanged One forever. Like, even if you look at this, it's like this lily is coming up like this lily is the future this lily is where we're headed this lily is where we're going but it is almost like being fertilized or supported by the past by what has happened this can even be that moment of enlightenment where you go oh my god this this person this opportunity this the beautiful thing that is here in front of me is why i had to go through all the things that i had to go through to get here 
Hierophant, the spiritual gatekeeper. This is definitely a spiritual relationship. It is one where I feel like there is a, a heavy emphasis on the long haul. Um, you know, with the Hierophant, the Chariot, and the Temperance, I mean, Jesus, like, what else do you want? <laughs> you know, I mean, this is like, hello, I want to marry you. I'm even getting this song. I, it's, I'm, I'm literally hearing like, I want to marry you. I want to marry you. I want to marry you. But it's like in a kind of a high pitched, um, but it like a really, I, I can't tell who's singing it. I can't tell what's happening here. Um, but it's like, I want to marry you. And somebody is trying to just really show that they're consistent and that they're investing and that they're very patient. But this is lurking underneath this deep desire. This, like, I already know what this is and I am just busting at the seams for you to realize what it is so that we can, like, go do this thing. Um, it's happening. It's happening. Three, one, five, one, five, fifteen. Something about that feels important to me. Three, one, five, three, one, five, fifteen, one, five. I don't know. Somebody is now feeling like they're not even being honest anymore. Somebody now is feeling as though they're being deceptive, and as and and almost like. Uh, it's almost like I'm afraid to give you the wrong impression. Like I'm, I'm afraid to give you the impression that I don't care when really I care so much and I'm trying to act like I don't. There's a fine line, right? Where something is a productive energy and where something becomes unproductive, where something moves from the light to the shadow. And it feels as though this person is really teetering on that brink at some point where it's like, I'm actually going to have to reveal this because it's actually, you know, kind of taking me to a place where I'm not able to move in alignment anymore. Um, where my alignment is getting off because I'm not being honest about this. And so, you know, when I'm trying to be this pillar of consciousness based on this like whole body alignment, and I'm kind of trying to deny this to give you the space and the freedom to find it yourself the way that I found it myself, um, but now it's kind of taking me to this place where it's like, I feel like I'm not even being honest. I feel like, and I keep getting, like, I feel like I'm giving you the wrong impression. This person thinks all the time that this is their wish fulfillment. They just think all the time. I ha I found my wish fulfillment. This is my wish fulfillment. This is my soulmate. This is, this is my happiness. This is, yeah. And the wheel of fortune, it's like my whole life is changing. And like, they're keeping that to themselves. That's pretty major, major. You know what I'm saying? That is major. Um, I am going to clarify this seven of swords. I, I know what I feel is right, but I, I'm just being guided to um, clarify it. Yes, this person is surprised. Like, I don't see, I mean, oh my God, Pisces. This person is having a major, major, major inner conflict over this. Like, really? And, and I think it is really surprising them, this inner upheaval that is happening where they actually feel like they're sort of coming undone or like they're actually coming out of alignment because they cannot express this clarity that they have about the situation. And it's like they're literally trying to give you or you are trying to give them every last second that you can before you burst at the seams. That's how I feel. And it may come out in kind of a shocking way or it may come out just like, Bleh. like, you know, I just, I gotta get this off my chest. You know what I mean? In a very surprising time. It might not be the way this person planned it or the way that they thought that it was going to happen. Yes, their desire is off the chain. Um, you've got six cups, nine cups, and three cups. This is a lot of cups over here. This person is developing like serious emotional attachment here as well, or like connection. I think you are too though. And I think you have the six of wands on the bottom of the deck. It's it, the wheel of fortune is saying it's time for this to change. It's time for this to come together. It's time for this to happen. Um, you know, this is, this is happening exactly the way fate would have it. And it's time, right? It's go time. 
with the six of wands, it looks like it's going to be very successful. This it, it's a successful union. It's a successful harmony between two parties here um, that's happening. And there's a huge celebration with the three of cups. This person deeply is deeply attracted to you or you are deeply attracted to them. There's just a, yeah, queen of wands twice. Man, okay, I'm gonna, let me, I actually, what I think would be most helpful to know is, you know, what's gonna happen next? Like, what's gonna happen for the rest of November? What's happening? Well, what, what's gonna go on here, please, Spirit? What can you tell Pisces? Surprise, surprise, we've got the Two of Cups. Oh my God. Oh my God. Look at how many repeat energies that we actually have here. So, somebody's not letting go of this. I mean, obviously they're not letting go of this, but there is an energy here of somebody who's wounded, like, I feel a little bit like one person is really ready to go. One person's like, I've got all the tools. I'm totally ready for this. Let's go. And the other person is like, okay, I don't want to let go of this. Like, I think this could be something that I desire, but also like, I wasn't necessarily like prepared for this. I'm still a little wounded. I, I don't want to let this go. I don't want to lose this. But like, also I just feel kind of like I, I'm on guard because I've just been through a lot of experiences that have been really hard. And, um, I feel like, so the magician is like, okay, you know, I'm I, like, I'm going to fight for this. Like, I know that, um, that this is kind of like meant to be or meant to come together. It feels like a reconciliation of soulmates with the Three of Cups. And so I'm going to be here and I'm going to patiently take on everything you want to throw at me. Every, every doubt you have, every fear you have, every, you know, all, like everything. I'm going to take it on. You know, I, I, I'm strong. I can do this. Um, because I am so sure about why I'm doing it, what I'm fighting for here. And with the world card and the death card, there is an end to this. There, there is a hundred thousand percent an end to this. And there is a new phase coming. There is a new cycle coming. Um, with the world card, this is where someone decides to make a different decision than the one that they have typically made. And that is bringing about this opportunity to completely close that cycle. If this is a past person coming back, this is like, okay, we are closing that door and we are opening a brand new one because we, we don't want to bring that past kind of back and forth conflicted energy of, you know, I'm ready, but you're not that push and pull that power dynamic. We don't want to put, pull that into this next phase and we don't need to we can close that and we can we can say the point of that was to find each other and now this new journey what the point is is to make all the right decisions to you know f to, to for the longevity of this to to invest in this on a daily basis and to build something that we're really proud of to build to like create the legacy and the day in and the day out of this connection um you guys have Scorpio energy, Libra energy, Gemini energy. You've got a lot of fire energy. Um, just man, oh man, oh man, a lot of fire energy. Woo, a lot of fire energy. So there is, um, and a lot of pentacle energy. I mean, you got it all here. But there is just a, okay, with the two of cups on the bottom, we found each other. That's what's important. We're soulmates. Like, we, we, we can bring this into a healthy partnership basically with the two of cups and that's what we're doing we're coming to this place where we're making a decision to make that our priority to make that our kind of like our foundation and it's like one person was waiting for someone to be ready for this and i feel like they're 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 close if they're not there they're close
Okay, wow, holy mackerel. What a reading. I feel like that took a lot out of me. Like, I feel like, woo, what a ride. All right, um, let me get you guys some message cards. If you're dealing with a water sign, I'm getting my act together, you guys. I'm getting organized. I'm going through my tarot closet. I have a lot of cards that I haven't used in a long time that I would like to start using. Um, I bring them out a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Um, but different cards bring different impressions and different opportunities for different messages. So I'm into it. Um, if you're dealing with a water sign, you're getting, I'm not ready for a commitment with anyone. They may have told you this in the past. You leave me breathless and without words. words. Your taste, the taste of your presence is something I will never be able to forget. If you're dealing with a fire sign, you will be in my heart until death and beyond. I can't bear to build it all again to watch it wash away. Everything I do reminds me of you. If you're dealing with an earth sign, love isn't always on time. Please be patient with me. Your kindness, the kindness in your heart is so beautiful. Oh, whoops. I could listen to your voice for days on end. Okay. And then if you're dealing with an air sign, I always hope to have you in my life. Our connection is so beautiful, but it's also painful and confusing as hell. I've never cared so deeply for someone before. And where do we go from here? Guys, ah, I'm excited for you. I, I am really excited for you. I think a lot of things that have happened will begin to be making sense. And I feel... I feel like you guys are finding freedom in love in a soulmate relationship and nothing could make me happier for you than that. That is my wish for each and every single one of you. May you be blessed with unconditional love now and forever. All right, you guys, I wish you the best. Always, always, always until next time. Bye-bye.